What's going on everyone? It's Mike back again and uh, yes, d d news today, Luca Dean has confirmed that he's, he's joined Aston Villa. Um, it's, I, I did a video on, was it Monday or Tuesday and I, I, I sort of really went into it and what it really meant and I don't want to keep going into it. Um, things, things have been said on platforms and, and for various people who you know, I know what they're talking about, obviously, but I don't think some of the things helps. And that, that that isn't a criticism. Like, it's not a criticism. I just, I think we're already depressed and it sort of sometimes makes it worse. Um, but there, there also has to be, in their defence, a huge realisation about the mess that we're in. The manager that is in charge of our team, the boards, the, the owner... There is literally issues within every area of Everton. And and this video is, is a transfer update, yeah, 100%. But it, it is also just to give you my thoughts again in what position might need what. So let's start ground level. Let's start with the players. So firstly, we're in a relegation battle. And, and it's going to be even worse if we lose to Norwich this weekend. Match preview comes out later. Um, It's going to be even worse if we lose to Norwich because there's no fight in this team. You know, I ask people, before I come off Twitter, I ask people, you know, what's the difference between this team and the Dogs of War team? And it essentially is. There was much more fight in that Dogs of War team. Maybe there wasn't the same amount of quality, but those players had the right attitude. We haven't got that. There's, there's too many players in our team that, in my opinion, aren't bothered. Um for whatever reason. Also means they can get that easy move out of Everton. Maybe it's turning a little bit toxic. Maybe they can't handle the pressure from the fans. Who knows? But the the in my opinion, the issue with the playing is the attitude. And I think I think that we can address that. I think that we can start playing with players that have a little bit more attitude, have a little bit more fight. I think Rashalison for a fact will not lie down if Everton really need him. Yes, there's been times he's been guilty of, of not necessarily looking like he's asked. I don't think that happens if we are 10 games to go struggling to stay in the league. I think Richarlison would pull his socks up and, and, and try his best for the team. I think Calvert-Lewin would. I certainly think the two new lads would, Mikulenko and and um, and Patterson. I think Andros Townsend would. I think Damari Gray would. Um I think to Corey and Alan Wood. Um, Centre-back wise, I'd be a little bit concerned, but I, th I think Godfrey Wood and I think Pickford Wood. So as a team, I think we're fine, but they're certainly not on the level of a consistent team. There's still going to be players going into that team that, you know, three or four of those players won't necessarily have the same attitude because we consistently have injuries. So that is an issue, in my opinion. Although I've just named 10 players that I don't think would be an issue, but you might disagree or agree with it. Then you go to the manager. The manager is um, hell-bent on playing. I'm going to say defensive football. Bearing in mind he did a, a, a statement or an interview last week where he spoke about high-pressing and attacking football. I haven't seen it. He played five at the back in the FA Cup. He fought, played five at the back against Brighton. And on both of those occasions, we conceded a goal within three minutes. So he can't defend. Rafa Benitez can't defend. And when they said, and me said at the start of the season we were going to be solid at the back, we're not. So the only way, in my opinion, that Everton are going to win games is by trying to attack. Because if you can't defend, you can't defend. You stick five behind. What's he going to do next? Stick six in there. He can't. He can't. He ain't going to do that. So he has to, in my opinion, start attacking teams. And if we can see two, we've got to score three. That, that's the crux of it. Well, that is the crux of it. And if that keeps us in the league this season, happy days. If it doesn't, well, at least we've gone out fighting. But at the minute, it looks like we're going out of the league with no structure, no plan and nothing. And I'm not saying we're going to get relegated, but I do think we're in a relegation battle. Then you go above him. There's no director of football now. While Marcel Brands was there, I and John and pretty much, I would say... 65, maybe 70% of the fans criticised Marcel Brands. Now, I had been criticising him for two and a half years. I criticised him 
over the transfers window on, Mar on with Marco Silva on Marco Silva's second season. Um, because Marco Silva finished the season incredibly, then went into the second season with no Garner. Was it no Stones? Anyway, definitely no Garner because he replaced him with Gabari, who didn't work out. And we went from thinking we were going to get to Kore and Zaha to signing Iwobi. It turns out Iwobi was Mashiri signing. Now, we're going to get onto him in a minute. But what I'm saying is that was a mess. That was a mess. That whole position was a mess. And he came out as he was leaving, as, as a fan approached him and said, and the, I think the fan said something about, you know, are they your players on the pitch? And he says something like, that isn't the only issue at this club. Basically calling out everyone else board level. So, clearly there was issues internally. A week later, Marcel Brands is not the Everton director of football anymore. Um, and I haven't heard anything from him since. But I suspect that uh, Bill Kenroy or Farhad Mashiri made it very difficult for him. We then move on to the owner. Now, this owner... I got absolute dog's abuse for criticising this man over the last three years. I have had death threats. I've had all sorts of shit said to me regarding the way that Farhad Mashiri runs his club. And now I'm wrong because the only thing he seemed to be focused on was spending big money on average players and a new stadium. Now, he's done the stadium, so thank you. But I can't sit here and say that I am happy with Farhad Mashiri anywhere. Like, I'm not even close. The man doesn't know what he's doing. He brings in the wrong people consistently. He has wasted millions of pounds on average Deadwood footballers. And now he's even signing players over the manager's head. So, look... Farhad Mashiri is one of, if not the, biggest problem at Everton Football Club. And I would not be asked one bit if anyone came into Everton and said, I'm buying you. I would not be asked because I'm telling you now, and you can agree with me, you can disagree with me, whatever. I'm, you know, we will run much better as a football team under David Moyes and Bill Kenwright than we was ever under Mashira. We knew we didn't have money. We knew sometimes it was going to be a struggle. We were ran better. Or we at least appeared to, because that's another issue. We all know what's going on at Everton. We all know it's a fucking mess. We all know. We all can see it. We hear about it. We get told about it. We all know. Whereas back in the day, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. And and part of that social media, part of it is social media, but the, the other part of it is I just think we were ran better. And there's a lot of people that are Bill Kenroy out. I'm one of them. I, I, I want the whole board to go. That includes Bill. He's always said he's had his heart at Everton. Again, I don't always think that. I think some of it is money motivated. Absolutely. But I'm starting to think there might be a reason why Bill Kenroy's hanging around. And that reason might be Mashira. As in, Mashira doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Maybe Bill feels sorry for the fact that he sold to him. I, d I don't know. Look, I'm just surmising. But this is my issue. You know, uh, we're in a real mess. And I can't quite put my finger on how to fix it. I, came, I said the other day, we need a plan. We need to set goals. We need ambitions. We need targets. We're never going to hear from the club. We're never going to hear directly from that football team. They either it's someone will either text Jim White at Talksport, or we get it from a hat on Twitter, who, who by all accounts is an absolutely smashing bloke or lady, of course. Um, so it's really difficult to be honest to understand what is going on with this football team in terms of the way that they're thinking, and that's an issue. So anyway, we move on to signings now. Enwar El Ghazi, 26 years old, signed from Ajax to Aston Villa, 2018, 
17. Uh, for £8 million. Since then, he's gone on to score a few goals for them, important goals. The goal that got them, I think it was, they won the playoff final because of him. Um, what I will say, and I, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, but... Any player that plays for Everton, I'll support and I'll back and, and, and I'll wish them well. Because you have to, you know, it's not it's not right that a player comes into Everton and all of a sudden he's like, what am I doing now? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you some stats. He actually signed for Villa on loan in 2018. He scored five goals in 31 games. That was in the Championship, if I'm not mistaken. 2019 onwards for Villa, he's played 65 times, scoring 15 goals. One of them or two of them being against Everton. Two thousand and twenty one season in in the Premier League, he made twenty eight appearances and scored ten goals. The kid got more goals than Charleston. However, that's not saying he's great. And equally what it, what it does say to Everton is a player that can't get into a team that's just above you in the league, fourteenth, three points ahead of you. Everton need their hand me downs, their players that can't get in the team. That speaks volumes of a football team that is £580 million deep in investment. But there you go. So Everton have been linked with him, and I suspect he's going to be signing today. He was seen at the Titanic Hotel last night. Um, oh, it's just not great. It's not great. There's even. There's even Villa players or, or, or people around the Villa area, Birmingham area, I'm reading, I'm seeing an article there, that are saying that he shouldn't sign for Everton online. Actually warning him against it. And that, and that's, that again just speaks for volumes of our football club, doesn't it? It speaks absolute volumes of our football club. So that's a mess. So then we move on to other players we've been linked with. Sean Longstaff. That appears to have gone quiet. Um... I don't know what will happen with Longstaff. He's a player that I don't particularly want. But can you imagine this transfer window if Everton sign El Ghazi and Longstaff? I think I genuinely think I genuinely think Twitter will explode. Um so yeah, not good in terms of transfers. Um some major news. Yuri Mina, Rashalison are back in training. Um, uh, which is a real positive. Yuri Mina has featured very little this season. Um he keeps getting injured, which is frustrating, but you know, we need him back. And equally with Richarlison, I'd say we need him back. Um, Damari Gray has been absolutely fantastic in his absence, but I, I, we just need quality everywhere, to be honest. Um, and then another thing that I mentioned, and I mentioned this on Twitter and I regretted it almost straight away. <laughs> I alluded to the Manchester United protest um, where they... Essentially, I think I don't know if they broke into the stadium, but got into the stadium, and you know they were talking to the board or the the Sky TV. You could see them; they were there about the big about the six that were trying to, um, you know, get away. Now, I'm not saying Everton should be doing that. I'm not saying the fans should be doing that at all. I'm not, um, but I do think we need to do something. I don't think this leaving on the 27th minute campaign works. I don't think it's strong enough. Um, I've heard rumours of a, of a sitting. So, you know, they can't shut the doors. They can't, um, you know, the, the staff can't leave. I don't agree with that either because I think I think actually that penalises the stewards. Um, I don't think it penalises the board who will just leave. There'll be a caretaker in charge at Goodison. Who, who essentially will have to stay until fans leave that ground. don't think that's fair on the staff that work at Everton because this isn't their problem. So I don't think that works. I do think a demonstration probably needs to be held. And I know that there's certain channels on here that have been part of that in the, in the past. And I don't know whether they would consider um, heading up another one. Um, but I know for a fact that I won't. And the reason why I won't is because I can't dedicate my time consistently to it because where I am, I'm based in Birmingham. 
So I, I can't commit to doing it. But I'm telling you now, something has to change at this football team. It, it, it really does. And I actually, I don't care if Rashiri sells. I don't care if Rafa was sacked and we replaced him with me. I couldn't care less. Them two at our football club are sending this place rotten. Rotten. And for me to sit here and still still know that Everton's best season under Farhad Mashiri ended with the tenure of Sam Allardyce guiding us to 8th and then being sacked. Bearing in mind we finished 10th under Ancelotti this season, last season. We're going to finish the bottom five, bottom eight this season under Rafa Benitez, if not the bottom three and relegated. Marco Silva didn't have a great time either. David Unsworth was a shocking manager. All of this has come under Mashiro. So, I don't know. If people want names, my two names I'd give you is Frank Lampard and Wayne Rooney. A lot of people will say, Mike, why are you mentioning those two stupid names? Why would Everton want to go and get managers who have got very little experience? Well, let me caveat both of those things with Wayne Rooney had dealt with the biggest mess in, in football, in my opinion, or certainly up there in football with what he had at Derby. 22 points deduction. Uh, the board playing silly buggers behind the scenes with money, partially on his deal. And uh, when he, when he did, at the start of this season, they had, I think it was seven fit available players and they had to recruit everyone else. And he's sitting currently in the league on 11th, points after a 22 point deduction and three points behind Barnsley who were 23rd now to say that Wayne Rooney has done a poor job would be a complete lie Wayne Rooney has done an exceptional job at a derby why not I'd rather have him than Rafa Benitez um, and the other one with Frank Lampard we've got some young players in our team Anthony Gordon Mikulenko Patterson, Ben Godfrey. We've also got players like Calvert-Lewin, who are a little bit older, Richarlison. If a Frank Lampard walked into that dressing room, I think every single one of those players would go, he's a legend. He's been there. He's done it. And some people will say he weren't a great manager. Some people will criticise him for his time at Chelsea. Some people might even say that he weren't very good at Derby. He should have gotten promoted. But what he did with them young players was exceptional. The younger players, in my opinion, all were much better under Lampard than... Yeah, they'll say it, under Tuchel. Now, I think the younger players were loads better. And I think that's why now, in my opinion, Chelsea are struggling a little bit because they can't get the best from these younger players. So, a team that largely... Frank Lampard bought and constructed, won the Champions League last season. And I think part of that issue was he signed so many players um, in such a quick period of time. I think I think Lampard could be a decent manager for Everton. And, and I know people will disagree, people will slag me off. I'm just giving you an opinion. Um, you don't have to agree or like it or anything. But you've asked for names, I'll give them you. Yeah. Um, or Potter but I think it would be very debatable as to whether Potter would leave Brighton right now forever but who knows so yeah apart from that guys I'm sorry it's a downbeat video um, I hope you enjoy it match preview for the Norwich game is coming very soon and um, yeah I will I will see you at the game I'm, me and my little boy will be at the game and uh, we'll see what happens Guys, I'll see you soon. Lots of love. Keep smiling. Peace.